sun perking through here at the baseball ground now and the rain you heard right he just said the baseball ground there was a soccer stadium in Derby, England called the Baseball Ground. It was actually really well known for quite some time, but if you're like me, you probably have never heard about it. Now, interestingly enough, baseball was originally played there. It's similar to the polo grounds in New York where originally they did play polo. Baseball was played at the Baseball Ground back in the early 1890s when it first opened. So let's dig in and see what we can find. Well, it all started when Albert Spaulding took his baseball tour of the world back in 1888 and 1889. Spaulding's Chicago White Stockings and an all-star team went to Australia, Egypt, Italy, France, Ireland, and England. Although it's easy for us to scoff at those early baseball world tours, the truth is that some of them had some sort of an impact. In fact, Spalding's tour had enough of an impact in England that people began to develop an interest in the sport of baseball. Things sprang into action when a man named Francis Lay visited the United States in 1889. Lay was also impressed with the game of baseball that he saw while he was here. I've talked a lot about how baseball hasn't changed much over the years. Well, 1889 was a bit different than how the games played today. Pitchers back then did throw overhand, though that was still a new thing. Throwing overhand had been around for maybe four or five years. The pitching box was on flat ground. It was about 55 and a half feet from home plate. That's right, there was no pitching mound yet. This was the first year in which only four balls made a walk. The strikeout had been defined as three strikes the year before, 1888. In fact, three strikes made a strikeout before then as well, but uh, they decided to try for four strikes for a strikeout in 1887. There was also a strict limit on the number of substitutes you could use in a game. If I remember right, you could only use a single substitute in a game and then maybe take another guy out if somebody was injured. So when you look at those insane pitching records of the past, you have to remember that they didn't use relief pitchers because it was against the rules. So yeah, I mean, it was the sport of baseball, but it was a lot different. Lay was so impressed with the sport that he helped form the National Baseball League of Great Britain and Ireland. Spalding also apparently had a hand in this. He furnished a few coaches. And, as far as I can tell, on June 30th, 1890, the first professional baseball game in England took place. Alright, I should note here that this kind of exporting of sport was actually really common back in those days. So, for example, take the first professional football league in the United States. Believe it or not, it was actually a soccer league, and it featured a large number of players that were imported from England. So that league was called the American League of Professional Football. That was established in 1894. It started play in October of that year. It was set up by six National League baseball owners. As a consequence, the teams all played in baseball stadiums. However, it folded after about a month. This was due in part to a lack of fan interest and also in part to the threat of a revamped Baseball American Association. The crazy thing is that this soccer league predated the first professional American style football league, that is the rugby style of football. It predated that league by a decade. Anyway, the professional baseball league continued in England until 1900, though its exact history is really spotty. The Derby team was expelled from the league in the mid 1890s. It was replaced with another team that season in Derby, I think. I'm not sure what the reason was for the expulsion. Some sources say it was low attendance and lack of revenue, and some sources say it's because they used American pitchers. Newspaper articles seem to indicate that there was an agreement to only use English pitchers. Why? Because they were worried that the Americans would throw curveballs. Um, I don't get it. Anyway, it seems that they continue to play baseball at the baseball ground, Though at some point, the baseball league in Britain became chiefly amateur. Now, the Derby County Football Club moved into the baseball ground in 1895. Over the years, the park changed. Gradually, it became enclosed. 
and it was turned into a full-fledged soccer stadium. Well, like many of those old English stadiums, it seems that the baseball ground was chiefly a wooden park. Also, unlike many of the baseball stadiums that we're used to, it wasn't torn down and completely replaced, at least not for a century. So that stadium building boom that we had in the United States in the 1920s, 19-teens, when all the big steel parks were built, that didn't really happen in Great Britain. Now, the baseball ground saw its best days in the early 1970s. In 1972, legendary manager Brian Clough led Derby to their first title. However, the capacity of the stadium shrunk over time. When it was converted into an all-seater stadium in the 1990s, it couldn't quite fit 20,000 people in there. That was down from a high of over 40,000 back when they would pack people in like sardines. Now, the other interesting thing to note about the baseball ground is that the name never changed. I mean, it was always called the baseball ground, even though it had been decades since anybody had seriously played baseball there. I guess they didn't get the memo about using corporate sponsors? Well, Darby finally abandoned the baseball ground in 1997. In the end, it was demolished in 2003, and that was the true end of a monument. It was a rare and a somewhat odd standing memory of the first baseball league in England, the league that most of us know nothing about. <laughs>